Hello, hello! How are my dear viewers doing today? I'm sure you are waiting for new drama. Hope you don't have one in your life. Let's go to the first story, about OP's spoiled sister, who is not happy with OP's honeymoon gift, because she doesn't have to fly first class. Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. So, my younger sister, let's call her Nia, 24 female, got married a few months back. A bit of backstory. She was born two months premature with a hole in her heart, which ended up healing by itself. But she was in the NICU for about two weeks before she was allowed to go home. This seemed to have traumatized my parents quite a bit. So, growing up, Nia got what Nia wanted, regardless of what that meant for her older siblings. I had gotten married three years prior, and my husband and I live in a different country. I come from a strictly middle-class family, and my husband is very well off compared to us. I had two wedding ceremonies, one in my country and one in his. As his family is rich, the wedding ceremony in his country was much more extravagant than the one we had in mine. My sister started saying things like, what your family can afford isn't enough for you, is it? This hurt, especially since my parents wouldn't stand up for me or admit that the only thing that they paid for was my wedding dress, which they considered to be my wedding gift from them and was relatively inexpensive. The minute my sister announced her engagement, it seemed like she wanted to one-up my ceremony, even though she didn't have the financial means to do so. She would say things like, my soft blush theme is going to look so much better than your gold theme. It was so tacky. Or making my father dish out $6,000 on her wedding dress and laughing because they didn't spend anywhere near that much on mine. The expenses kept mounting and she and the groom couldn't afford it and it was basically on my parents to finance the whole thing and they begged me to foot some of the bills. I ended up paying for the catering, for the 200 guests she had invited. Fast forward to two months before the wedding, and she goes, Since you haven't bought me a gift yet, how about paying for our flight tickets to our honeymoon? I wanted to say no, but my parents guilt-tripped me, and I did have a soft spot for my little sister, so I caved. She wanted to go on her honeymoon to the same country I went for mine. I bought her economy-class tickets on Singapore Airlines, as it had the least amount of transit time, and Shanghai Airport is a super nice place to transit anyways. She glared daggers at me once I handed her the ticket. Soon, I found out from my cousin that she was grumbling about how I was such a cheapskate since I didn't buy her business class seats instead. Apparently, she married rich. This is the least she could do. It all came to a head when she confronted me in front of our parents for being an unfeeling sister, knowing they would side with her. They started pestering me, and I went home, and kind of broke down in front of my husband. He was pissed and got the tickets refunded the next day. I didn't stop him. Later, they had to go on a budget airline. They still vilify me about this to this day, and I'm starting to feel very guilty. Not an a-hole. OP gave her the gift she requested, even after paying for the wedding catering, and her reaction was totally unwarranted. She publicly rejected the gift, so getting a refund was the appropriate thing for OP and her husband to do. I personally would have canceled the catering, too. I am a 39 male. This whole ordeal started when I was around 25, but to be able to fully make my case, I need to provide some context. My brother, male 41, is a narcissistic and manipulative a-hole who takes pleasure in making people suffer and been enabled by our parents his entire life. His favorite thing to do was to torture me in every way possible except physical, since I was, and still, more athletic than him, so he knew that if I snapped, I would split him in two. Luckily to me, I was able to get out of that crap hole when I was 18. After that, I started dating a girl who I thought was perfect, till she revealed herself to be even more narcissistic and manipulative than my brother. The thing was so serious that for me to be able to get away from her, I needed to change my numbers and move out of town. It took a lot of therapy for me to recover. After I recovered, I attended a small family gathering to celebrate my grandma's birthday. And guess who was there? My ex, with my brother. And if that wasn't already an eyesore, they had the gall to announce their engagement at the party. But the thing is, this is a common tactic my brother used to hurt me, 
Since I can remember, he always stole my girlfriends or dated my exes and made her lives miserable just to hurt me. But I already have given up on them, so I let them be. Well, long story short, my ex showed herself to be way more cunning and manipulative than my brother. They were married for less than a decade. She cheated on him, got pregnant, and passed the kid as it was my brother's son, divorced him, made a lot of false accusations of a bunch of terrible things. Long story short, my brother lost his job, his friends, his reputation, his savings, and is bind by the law to pay alimony and child support. Our parents who took upon themselves to help him also were milked dry by court fees and lawyers. My ex fled the state after she got what she wanted. Now my parents and brother are almost homeless and begging me to help them, but I am not moving a finger to help them. Since then, the rest of my family is calling me an a-hole for letting my brother marry that witch and for not helping them to get back on their feet. So, am I the a-hole? Not an a-hole. This is what karma is. I'm honestly surprised OP is even speaking to his family. OP should let this go from his mind. He's a grown man who made his own choices. Same for OP's parents. They can figure out what to do amongst the three of them. I, 46 female, raised my daughter by myself. I got pregnant by my ex-boyfriend, but as soon as he found out I was pregnant, he gave me an ultimatum to abort or he'd leave. I chose to keep the baby, and he left. I later learned he had fled the country to avoid paying child support. I struggled, but we got by. I decided to move back in with my parents, and I stayed there for a couple of years. I then got a job at a clothes store, and there I could provide for my daughter. Over her teenage years, however, my daughter became spoiled. She began being more demanding, always wanting the latest clothes, phone, and always quite annoying. I shrugged it off as a puberty thing and knew she'd get over it. When she was 15, her father tried reaching out and said he had returned to the country and was struggling now after his girlfriend, I didn't know he had, had allegedly split up with him. He contacted me saying he was sorry. He even said he would pay me everything he owed in child support. However, I refused, which angered my daughter. She said he might be able to provide better for her, but I told her that he very likely is having a tough time and wants to come back just so we can look after him, and that he left me struggling when I was pregnant. She got upset, but didn't mention it again. When she was 18, she told me she was dating a 19-year-old guy and was going to live with him. Of course, I wanted to let my daughter spread her wings, so I asked if she was sure, and then she moved in with him. Apparently, she's now gone LC, little contact, with me because I'm apparently a bad parent for not letting her reconcile with her father. She only lets me visit once every couple of months for a couple of hours and also tries to avoid talking to me over the phone and via text as much as she can. Her boyfriend apparently has broken up with her and the lockdown is lifting where I live, so soon she'll have to move out as her boyfriend is giving her a month. I asked her why her boyfriend broke up and she said it was because he thought she was being emotionally abusive towards me and didn't want to be with her. She wants to move back in with me, as she told me when she called me last week. I decided to tell her no. I told her I was cutting contact with her because she was being horrible and abusive, and I didn't want her to live with me as she evidently didn't care about me and only wanted a roof over her head. She got angry and swore down the phone telling me she's going to be homeless and I was the nasty one for not letting her see her father, who may be able to provide for her better. I told her that her father didn't care about her and only wanted to use her, but she hung up. She hasn't spoken to me since. Am I an a-hole for cutting contact with my narcissistic daughter and not allowing her to live with me? She has a right to be upset about the fact that OP didn't allow her to get to know her dad and child support is an obligation the dad had, and while he was very late in paying it, he offered to pay in full, and OP declined. That money is not OP's, it's assistance for OP to raise her daughter. She likely needed time and space to sort out her feelings about OP and her dad. OP was upset about her cutting down on her contact with her, and OP's solution to that is to completely cut her out of her life entirely, and refusing to help her, even though she's got no other place to go. If anyone in this scenario is a narcissist, it's OP. If OP wants to reconcile with her and have a relationship in the future, I would let her move in, 
and have a mature discussion with her about how OP and her feel. If OP sticks by her choice not to let her come back home, she should not be surprised if this is the end of OP's relationship with her. She's 18, so it's up to OP whether or not OP lets her live with her now. But OP sounds like she is getting revenge for her not seeing OP as much as OP would like. It sounds like she was justified in being angry at OP for not letting her have a relationship with her dad. OP should not let her live with her if she doesn't want to. But OP should not pretend it's all her fault, and should not get mad later when she likely permanently cuts OP off. She might be immature, but she's also still pretty young. Update I decided about a week ago I would contact my daughter and offer her a chance to live with me for a while. I contacted her and she did not answer a few times, but then on the fourth time she did answer. It turns out she had been looking for a place to stay with the small amount of money she had so she could get a better paying job later on. But she had no luck so far finding a place to live and only had about three weeks to leave her boyfriend's house. I did feel sorry for her. I don't think I'm a narcissist and I do still think she was acting a little spoiled, entitled, and narcissistic. But I do feel sorry for my daughter. So I decided to let her come live with me on one condition. That she would be nice, friendly, and wouldn't act spoiled anymore. She agreed and decided to move in with me yesterday. She has since been helpful, polite, and hasn't acted spoiled since. I'm confident she has changed from her previous self. She asked me if she could meet her father, but I'm still not sure. I decided to give her my ex's number, but I told her to take what he may say with caution, as I still didn't trust him very much. She has spoken to my ex over the phone, and they got to know each other, but I do hope my ex genuinely is sorry and we would start over someday.